Welcome to Portal 2 Community Edition, a brand new way to mod a map made by the community for the community. My name is Mr. Ace, but most people just call me Ace. I'm one of the department heads for Portal 2 Community Edition, lead level designer and campaign leader, as well as the public relations person. During this event, we will give you an insight as to what has been going on behind the scenes, and later, we'll be answering questions that were asked by those in our Discord, so make sure to follow the link in the description if you want to participate in the next Q&A. Hi, I'm Smade and I'm a programmer for P2CE. My main focus so far has been improving the engine. Arguably the largest contributor to file size in Source Engine games or maps is textures. A very rough analysis on large maps with lots of custom assets gave that around 48% of file size is made up of textures alone. This is largely because of the way the textures are stored in Source. If you want to make a texture that will show up in-game, you first have to convert your image, which could be a JPEG, a PNG, or any other format, to a VTF file so that the engine knows how to handle the image data. However, VTFs only compress this image data in a very simple way so that they could be loaded quickly on 2004 era hardware, and because of this, they're generally massive. For example, a single 4K texture can reach sizes of about 90 megabytes, which is the size of some full games. To solve this, we've added deflate compression to the VTF format. We'll skip the technical details of this, but this is a method that highly resembles PNG compression and allows very low file sizes without sacrificing image detail at all, all while remaining extremely fast. After testing over the entire texture collection of a few games, this change gives around a 60% size reduction on average. Combined with the 48% figure from earlier, this means that on average, you will be able to take off about a third of total map size by simply compressing all your textures beforehand. Source Engine is somewhat notorious for its loading screens. One of the trickiest waits on map loading times I found showed up as these strange large gaps where it looked like the engine wasn't doing much. The cause of this issue turned out to be from the engine mistakenly thinking that it was in multiplayer mode while it was actually in single player mode, choking down the size of how much info can actually be sent from the server to the client to be something more suitable for the internet. After we remind the engine that it's actually in single player, you can see that gap disappear. As you can see, on average, we're seeing load times that are about 28% faster. While there are more problems to be solved and data to be gathered, soon enough we'll be loading maps at top speed. For many of us programmers on the team, Source2 has been a huge inspiration in terms of engine and tool design. Hi, I'm JJL77. I'm a programmer for Chaos on both P2C and Momentum Mod. Currently, I'm primarily concerned with engine work, Linux work, and our tools, both open source and internal. In Source2, Valve completely overhauled the engine's tool suite, opting to integrate things like the Model Browser and Hammer as engine tools, much like Source1's Particle Browser. This allows for tight integration with the game itself, reducing the differences between how a level or model looks in Hammer versus in game. Lucky for us, parts of what would become SFM and Source2's tools are left in the code base for us to use. Using Qt, we've redesigned the model browser and created an asset browser tool, both of which are heavily inspired by Source2's model doc and asset browser respectively. These new tools are being designed in an extremely modular fashion, so they may be easily integrated into Hammer and other large standalone tools. Not only does this reduce code duplication and improve consistency between tools, this allows us to individually design and test tool components before integrating them elsewhere. The work shown here is still early, more is to come. My name is Don Simon, but everyone calls me Andy. I'm a level and a puzzle designer for P2CE, and I'm co-department lead of the campaign. The clean style of showing a course is the most Portal 1-esque so far. As the closest that we got to humans was in a first Portal game, it was really important to catch a bigger fish and somehow assimilate this human way of making test chambers with Portal 2's robotic style. This also means that the only thing you like is going to come back in fashion. This theme is an extension of the Schrodinger clean style. 
although this section of aperture science was mishandled and poorly managed previously, it's not really a lost cause. With the scientists in control, the facility is desperately trying to repair itself in the face of the mundane catastrophe. The inspiration for this burning facility came from Dre's Postmortem 02, so is the grunge style. Some bits came from the Half-Life 2 Episode 1 Citadel section. You can feel it in the skybox, the lighting with frequent fireballs that are falling from the ceiling. Hey everyone, my name is Fernie, and I work on designing puzzles and art passing levels for the Portal 2 Community Edition campaign, as well as occasionally doing some modeling and media design. To bring in more variety to the campaign's visuals, we've been working on a theme that expands on the overgrown aesthetic by shifting environmental colors towards a warmer, more saturated, autumn-inspired palette, which can be seen on the several foliage assets scattered across this test chamber, as well as on the natural lighting coming from the hole in the ceiling. Hi, my name's Frosty. I'm an asset artist on PGCE. I've been working on revamping various iconic assets from Portal in order to make use of our new physically-based rendering shader. This shader allows the artist to create texture maps, which hold both roughness values and metallic values, on top of the colour and the bump map, allowing for a far more realistic appearance. The surface can reflect more lighting from areas where it should, and vice versa. The metallic map will define areas that should be shaded as non-dielectric, as they would in the real world. I've recently been working on recreating the test chamber textures using this PVR workflow, and these assets will be available as official downloadable content for those who wish to use them. Hi, my name is Alex Zero, and I'm a Chaos Core maintainer and the server infrastructure team lead. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in Chaos, and one of the things that few people may have heard about is the server infrastructure that keeps P2C's team workflow running smoothly. In order for our team members to effectively collaborate, we use multiple Git servers and automatic CI CD pipelines to build our engine and deploy the Steam. Did you know that as of today our engine has over 5,000 commits and 1,000 pull requests merged? Recently we completed a move for our Git servers to a dedicated server platform, increasing the reliability of our internal services significantly. Our server costs are not cheap and currently the costs are coming out of team members' pockets. So if you can, please consider showing your support on our Open Collective page. Every little counts. We are continuing heavy work behind the scenes on our infrastructure, and there are some services that we may or may not be announcing in the future, so stay tuned.